Hello and good evening, everybody. Welcome to Words on Whiskey, episode 23. And uh, we have a great show lined up for you. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Sorry for the delay. Uh, we had some technical issues. They've been resolved. So um, as always, I'm going to kick off with the news. And uh, it's been an incredibly busy week. And uh, I suppose coming up to the run-up to Christmas, there's bound to be a lot of things happening. So first things first, uh, Ireland is having its very first memorabilia uh, of Irish whiskey items and drinks related items and that's on irishwhiskeyauctions.com and that kicked off today and ends on Sunday so lots of uh, over 400 items there so lots of different items that might be of interest um, the other news is that uh, Writer's Tears has been given a, a refresh you know and when I heard this first that they were looking to re designed the packaging, I kind of got a bit of a fright because, you know, it's such an iconic brand and I thought it might have been butchered. But thankfully, they've uh, done a really respectful job of rebranding the, the product. So congratulations to them. Uh, so that's going to be across their core products. And it's also going to be across the writer's tier uh, cast strength, which was released uh, today also. So that's a look with that. They've also updated their website. So one thing that they have that I haven't seen anywhere else is uh, a tasting wheel. So if you get a chance to go over to walshdistillery.com um, and uh, you'll be able to play around there with the tasting wheel. Other releases, uh, Teeling have come out with a, a standard Teeling small batch, but finished in, in a ginger beer cask. And they've worked with the umbrella company to do that. So that's uh, available. I think its price is 50 euro, but it's sold out on their site, but it's available on the umbrella site for 45 pounds. So 46% ABV. And, and of course, Dingle, the long awaited release from Dingle, the first releases uh, of pot still whiskey uh, from Dingle Distillery uh, under Graham Cool. So there's 8,000 bottles of. Uh, Standard strength, and I say standard strength, uh, pot still whiskey, it's actually 46%, 46.5%, and the uh, recommended retail price is 95 euro. Um, and I think half of them are going abroad and half of them are staying uh, in Ireland. And unusually, they're also bringing out a cask strength version uh, at 59.9%, and there's only 500 of these, so uh, they're going to go very, very quickly and they are retained for 199 euro. Uh, I told you there were a lot of releases. So Row & Co, they brought out their cast strength annual release. Uh, and this one is a 13 year old single malt, uh, completely matured in uh, port casks and retailing for 74, 74.95, I think is the price on that. And it's actually 74 euro. It's 58% ABV. And then uh, Gelston's have also got a release. They brought out a pot still uh, finished in Pinot Noir cast. So uh, Johnny Neal partnered with his cousin in Australia, Sam Neal, to, to work on finishing uh, this particular pot still. And I think this one is 44.99, 40% ABV. So that's it on the release side. So look, there's one other big release that we're really here for, and I hopefully some of you got samples. Um, but let me bring in the team here. So I'll introduce uh, Rob. So this is the first time we've had five in the call. So welcome, everybody. You can all hear me? Yes. Excellent. Hey, yes. Excellent. So Hello, I'll just sir, do... I'll just do some quick introductions. Uh, so we've got Rob Fox, who is the chairman of the Fox Cigar Store. Uh, uh, Jorgos, who's the managing director. Kevin O'Gorman, master distiller now in IDL. And Ron Lacey is brand ambassador in IDL. So you're all very welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, I think we, we all know why we're here. And um, I suppose... Firstly, to put it in context, uh, Rob and Jorgos, I'll, I'll start with you guys, please, first. And um, maybe you could uh, explain what was the motivation first to, to look at doing 
uh, a single cask release and how it was that you came to choose Middleton? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Sergius. Uh, it's it's part of our business uh, for nearly 140 years now is uh, been uh, get working close with all our uh, suppliers at source with a lot of our products. We've been doing it with cigars, with tobacco, with pipes, and now with whiskies as well. It's important for us to, you know, uh, to, to, to work and collaborate uh, with our suppliers and uh, get our hands on very, very exclusive product and have our name on it and offer it to our customers. And uh, this is a... Uh, this is our latest, uh, our latest creation. We're very, very proud. Very, we're very proud of it. Yeah, uh, so you should be as well. And Rob, you're fifth generation of the family. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about your background and, and a little bit about the the history of the store? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the store established in in 1881 uh, by James J. Fox. That's the name over the door, and has been since. Um, uh, I'm fifth generation. I've been working in the business since 1997 um right. the um, as i say my my dad was working in it when i joined and my grandfather had just retired um and my grandfather was the third generation so i've, I've only really seen it from since since then if you like um yeah. so obviously there's a there's a large uh, large amount of history here so i'm just sharing a screen here of Dublin, I think this yeah. is in the 1950s, um, and it's so good. Boxes is very much a landmark, landmark story in Dublin. Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 unusual for us. Uh, well, uh, in Dublin generally, I think, in that we've been there for so long and we haven't uh, moved. Um, it's our uh, so yeah. There's some wonderful photographs and some actually some old cine um, footage, and okay. there we are. Uh, off the Trinity, yeah. Yeah. Are these gentlemen here? Are they relatives? So. Yeah. So, so the guy on the on the on the right, um, that's my late father. Yeah. Um, then the guy on the left is my grandfather, and the guy in the middle is a, a gentleman called Oliver Hill, and he was uh, managing director um and chairman of the the dublin business for uh, most of his career um yeah. oliver was succeeded by david mcgrain who was subsequently succeeded then by Orgas. okay and the business it, it never did whiskey in the beginning or did it no it no we started our whiskey um so the business uh, over the years the business kind of um, evolved quite a bit. We went from retailing on Grafton Street to importing and distributing. Yes. Um, the, our first foray into the um, into the whiskey markets was distributing for uh, for, for Cooley um, with um, in the 1990s when they launched. Yes. Um, and then in uh, it was about I think it would have been 2006. We went into a big uh, refurbishment. In um, in Grafton Street, and we uh, we took a license on at that point, um, yeah. and started retailing whiskies in two thousand six. Yeah, and, and of course, there's big changes have gone underway since. I mean, there we see yeah. the the very latest fit out, which you managed to get done just in time for COVID. <laughs> so the previous fit out, I just I just to warn you, the previous fit out was just prior to the massive global recession uh, that was caused all the banks to collapse. Oh, right. and, and, and this fit out is uh, is the one that immediately preceded COVID. So we know now what to look out for. Now, next time you guys see us refurbishing, sell all your shares. Yeah, <laughs> if you can give us a, a little bit of notice, yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. But this, the no store, problem, no problem. I mean, the, I have to say, the store, the store looks magnificent. It's 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 really brought it up a whole notch. Uh, and I suppose, obviously, the big difference now is. Whiskey is playing a, a, a very big part in that. But it's not just whiskey, yeah. is it? I mean, you do have rum and gins and other other spirits yeah, as well. Yeah, so <laughs> absolutely. It's premium spirits. Actually, we, it was very interesting when we got the license, and we every license requires a guard to, to sign off on it. And they were very keen for there not to be another off license at the bottom of Grafton Street. Oh, right. Um, okay. so, so we, we spoke to them about it and explained to them what we were about and, and, and what we were 
were targeting in terms of our market sector. And they were quite happy with that. So it really is focused on premium spirits. We do sell a little bit of champagne. Am I right, Jorgis? That's right, yeah. yeah. It's more a case of somebody locally needs a bottle of the gift and in they pop. And, and, but our specialization and, and where we go to work with our suppliers yeah. is, in the, is in the whiskey side of things. Yeah. And are there parallels between the cigar business and whiskey? Um, I think I think there are in that they're um, both in my mind are um, explorations in taste. Yeah. So it's it's very rare now for somebody in either market to be a one brand person. Um, and what people what new consumers are on is a is a is a journey of of exploration to see what's new, what's different, what compares well or contrasts well against another one. And that's very much the same with the handmade cigar market. Yeah. And of course, they're notorious for being paired with cognac and with whiskey. Um, I mean, uh, how much has the bus business shifted now towards whiskey and away from cigars? Is cigars still strong? Absolutely. Um, I think it's probably fair to say it's, it's, we're, we're, we're just probably passing the 50-50 mark now. Okay. With whiskey growing faster than cigars, but cigars is still uh, a, a very important part of our business. Yeah. Um, but it is it is passing through the fifty fifty point at the moment. Okay, excellent. I suppose I'll switch to Rowan. Uh, hi, Rowan. How are you? Hi, sir. Just good. Thanks. Yeah. Great to be here. Excellent. Yeah. Well, congratulations as well are in order because uh, your engagement was about a month ago. <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, delighted with that as well. Yeah, so congratulations there. I mean, you would have been involved in this, I suppose, uh, at the early stage as well. But I mean, you do have uh, a cast strength Middleton program. You do one or two every year. I mean, I, I'm familiar with the one in Ashford Castle, two in Adair Manor. You did one with Searsons as well. Um, what is it that, uh, what's the reason that you do collaborate with businesses and, and bring out? you know, those special releases? I suppose, I mean, it's very much, it is a collaboration to say so. It's a, it's an opportunity to, to work with, um, you know, various customers and people that, that oh. selling our brands and talking to consumers about our brands all the time. And it, I might have, I, have I got you? Have I lost you there? You're in and out at the moment, Rowan, but... I might switch well, over to Kevin just for a minute. Connection there. Well, Kevin, you might pick up on that then until uh, Rowan's connection comes back properly. Yeah, so um, you can hear me, yeah? I'm okay? Yeah, yes, candidate. Yeah, the, uh, my, my, uh, my internet is a little bit flaky as well in, uh, in North Cork, so hopefully it'll hold up. Um, yeah. yeah, so look, it's great to um, these collaborations with, 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 with different customers. Um, I was just, you know, listening to, to, to Rob and Jurgis there, um, you know, with a history going back to, I think it's 1881, five generations. And I suppose there's a lot of similarities to, 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 to our, you know, to, to ourselves in Middleton as well in terms of history and tradition. And it's just wonderful to collaborate with, with uh, James J. Fox on this. Um, you know, we, 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 I suppose we love collaborating with, you know, long-term um, customers um uh you know who who, who sell our whiskey and have done really great for us so it's it's a great collaboration and we're delighted uh, and again it's just a it's a good match it's a great match yeah. um a very prestigious shop like the james j fox so we're we were just delighted to, to to get involved and 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 again the the, the whiskey is, is is wonderful and we'll have a look at that later on yeah. um and as 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 Ron was saying i suppose it's it's an opportunity for you know various customers to 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 showcase what they are doing. And then it's an opportunity for us in Middleton as well to, to showcase our, our whiskey. So it works both ways um, yeah. and uh, it, it, it works well for both. It's very good. Yeah. I mean, obviously you've built up a, a very prestigious brand in, in the Middleton and it primarily all the partnerships that I have seen have been very high end as well. That's the direction for the brand, I presume. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, uh, the Middleton very rare brand is, you know, it's, it's, 
as people know, it's the pinnacle of, of Irish whiskey. It's very prestigious. It's the, you know, hand selected whiskies. Um, so it's, it's really, I suppose it's, it's, the, it's the top, it's the premium. And, and that's where our customers really want to collaborate with and they want to select the very best in, in Middleton. So it, it works that way. And um, the whole selection process of the cast is very interesting as well. Uh, and I know, you know, Rob and Jurgis were involved in that uh, with my predecessor, Brian. Uh, but it's, it's, it's supposed to give people a great opportunity to delve into the, the, the inventory we have down in Middleton. And, you know, there's, there's a selection process and it works both ways. We, we, we kind of give maybe guidance, but we really rely on uh, our customers saying, you know, what they want in terms of age, in terms of type of distillate. Um, and it works both ways, um, but the ultimate choice comes down to, 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 to you know, uh, Rob yeah. and and Jurgis at the end of the day. Yeah. So I mean, Kevin, it, sorry, it's... Kevin, Kevin, just to say, we, we're not quite sure we got the right one, and we're wondering can we come back down next week and see if there was another one? <laughs> we're not quite sure we nailed it. <laughs> yeah. I, right. We could do number two, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I presume you get inundated with requests for these, uh, uh, Kevin. And you know, do do they do they know what they want when they come in? I mean, is the remit so they come in and they say we'd like to do a partnership of a bottling? Do they have a good indication of, of what it is they're looking for at the beginning, or do they need guidance and yourself and Rowan take part in in doing that? And then at the end they sign off, or how does it work? What's the mechanics? Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's a mixture, sir, just to be honest. Uh, some people would be quite clear on what they need in terms of age and style and what type of cask. Um, and, and that works pretty well. And we, we can sort of su supply prototypes and, and take samples. Uh, but then other customers uh, would not be so clear and they need help and assistance. Um, so it, it's a mixture, I'd be honest, Sergius. It, it kind yeah. of, and, and Rowan probably would see that as well, that it, it, there is a bit of variation in terms of the, the knowledge out there that's, that, that people come in with. Yeah. And your, your, you would have gone down oh, and probably with Rowan as well and met Kevin down there. Is that right? Um, so we started actually, the, this process started about it's almost a year and a half ago now at this stage, I think, Rowan. Uh, and uh, we did. Yeah. We were presented with, you know, the options, and uh, you know, we gave we gave an indication of what kind of age, you know, we wanted to go with, and uh, we actually sat down. It was myself, Paul Walsh, um, uh, Shane, uh, Shane Davy, and Jack Garland, um, and we sat down with several samples. And we knew that what was going to be presented to us was going to be a whiskey that would sound on its own, as it is, but we had to you know we went through it and you know we, we chose the one that stood out for us um uh, it was uh they, they were all very different whiskies uh although even though they were all from the same kind of more they were about 21 22 years old all uh eight trade in first wheel ex bourbon casks um but it was uh it was interesting because when you know we tried we we, we agreed not to try and influence uh each other's opinion about its whiskey as we're trying it um and we agreed on at the end after we had tasted all the, the various samples that we had that we'll all just write in a piece of paper which of the five whiskies that we tried was our was our favorite um just so as i said so we didn't want to influence one you know each other's opinions and um, so everybody that was around the table we all went for 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 this one uh we were we were worried that we might have uh, had to go through back again and uh, have people say no you know no i do prefer this no i rather last but we were all like this really really stood out uh from everything that we tried yeah and, and then you know you, you sit down and, and you, you say okay i've decided i like this one what's what's the the process then after that ron kevin yeah, so once the, and maybe Ron can jump in here as well, <clears throat> once the um, the selection is made and everybody's happy with that particular cask, uh, the first thing we do is we we set that cask aside and it's it's reserved uh, on our stock control system. Um, it's put away safely. That's that's the very first thing we do to make sure yeah. there's no, um, it doesn't go anywhere else. Um, yeah. So it's reserved uh, for, for that customer and it's put on one side. And then I suppose Ron and the team then uh, would, 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 would um, kick into action in terms of packaging, uh, design, label design, uh, prototypes would be developed 
and and that's where the whole bottling and packaging and design team come in and i suppose it's it's worth um, thanking those as well tonight because you know I'm, I'm here from middleton but there's there's a big team as well in terms of the labeling the bottling the packaging that 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 and there's a lot of work involved in that as, as Jurgis and, and rob know so we, we'd have to thank them tonight as well for for that um and and they really after that then once the label is is agreed and uh, the bottle design uh it's a matter of just signing off on that and then you you fix your your bottling date um and and, and away you go and that's that's where we've got to to this week yeah uh, and rob your i suppose did you end up getting what you wanted uh in terms so if you were to compare what you thought you wanted from the beginning to what you ended up with how did that uh how did that measure up I personally, I don't. I don't think I could have been uh, happier with with the end result. You know, it, it is really, really good. Um, I mean, I tried. I tried the whiskey on Monday. Um, I hadn't tried it since since the time that we selected the cask, and uh, you know, it's exactly as I remembered it to be. And we were we're we're extremely we're delighted with it. You know, we we couldn't have been any happier. Excellent. And uh, I presume it's gonna. It's 162 bottles, 54.9 percent, and. Uh, there's the finished product there. So, I mean, it's it's magnificent. But I suppose the proof is going to be in the tasting. So we have some of our joiners here. They've come in and some people have uh, samples. So maybe, I don't know, uh, Kevin or Rowan, if you want to take us through actually tasting this uh, this whiskey, that would be great. And maybe yeah. give us a little bit more detail. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the, the guys can jump in here as well. Uh, but I, I, I just maybe give a, a little bit of background. So um, the first thing it's it's you know it's it's a, it's a single pot still, um, and as as most people know, uh, the, the cereals used here would be a mixture of malted barley and barley. Um, it was um, distilled back in 1998 uh, in April, and coincidentally. Um, that's the uh, ver that's the year I actually joined um, Middleton Distillery, and I was probably working in the brew house at that time. So I can claim that I had a, a part in the uh, in, in in the distillation of, of of this particular distillate. So that was a that was a great year for me as well, uh, 1998. Um, so it it was um, it was filled into cast then um, in April the 14th, 1998. Um, so it's a single pot still. It's it's a kind of medium style uh, pot still, uh, distillate. Uh, it comes off the still at about 84% alcohol. It's then reduced down to 63% with with with, uh, with water, uh, and then it's filled into the cask, and then it's sent off to warehouse. And I think this was warehouse. If I have it here, 22B, uh, Bay 10. So it was stored into that in that warehouse, uh, and it was left there for as we know, for, for 22 years. Um, so 1998, uh, the cast number is, have it here, 34834. Um, and uh, that, you know, that, that, that was the history of, 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 the, 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 whole, of the whiskey. Um, it's a first fill uh, American barrel. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a B1 that we, we, we get these barrels in from, from Kentucky and Tennessee. So this would have been brought into Middleton early, probably, March, I would say, um, 1998. Um, it would arrive then from 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 Kentucky. Um, it would have a, a light to medium toast um, f from the states, um, and then it's inspected once it arrives, and then it's filled with the distillate, and then put away into warehouse. So that's kind of the the process that's involved in 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 in, in, in arriving at this point. Yeah. Um, so maybe we just have a have a look at the whiskey and so i'm not sure who has who has a sample and who <laughs> this quite well, kind of difficult I mean, hopefully most people have a sample of it um so it's 54.9 percent um alcohol by volume uh, so it's basically straight from the cask this is the whiskey straight from the cask um non-chill filters non-colors pure natural this 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 is it um so we just have you know a look at the the color it's gonna Deep amber, lovely color. Um, uh, we just have a nose. And if anybody has any questions, by the way, please uh, feel so, free to ask or any comments. I would love to hear your feedback. So for me, initially, th there's a burst of, burst of sort of spices on, on the nose. 
Um, yeah. It's quite sort of black pepper, maybe a bit of nutmeg, cinnamon, and that sort of spiciness which we'd expect from that that style of single pot still whiskey. And then, if you move behind that, I get a lovely, what I would say, toasted wood. Uh, and I think one of my colleagues in Middleton described it as smoldering wood. Um, very distinctive toasted wood, smoldering wood nose. Um, very, very nice. Um, and then I get some sort of ripe fruits. And maybe a touch of dark chocolate, probably yeah. more dark chocolate rather than rather than sort of you know lighter lighter chocolates, kind of dark chocolate, and maybe a hint of sort of coffee, coffee beans, roasted coffee beans. Really rich, rich, rich nose. Yeah. Is anybody else getting any other notes there on the nose? I see. I seem to be getting um, a hint of citrus as well, offers. Mm, citrus, yeah, it's kind of citrus fruit. Little, little touch of citrus fruit, yeah. So we're going to taste it at um, at cat strength, okay? So, uh, slanche it. Slanche it. Slanche it. Slanche folks. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Oh. Okay, very silky at that 54.9%, very, very silky, very smooth. Um, quite a nice bit of sweetness, but it, but the right balance. Um, get the fudge. I get a lot of fudge, uh, yeah. maybe chocolate cake. I know that people get the fudge. It's quite distinctive, the sort of the element of fudge in it. Um, and maybe towards the end, then I get some maybe that citrus fruit you were talking about, Serges. Maybe a bit mm -hmm. of maybe lime, maybe mandarin, a bit of orange peel. Yes. Towards the end. Did you get that? I, I kind of get it in more grapefruity, almost uh, citrus. Mm. Just right at the end. Yeah, just on the finish. But the spices is, is, is mm. that. And very long. Very long. Yeah, I have a few questions in here actually already. Uh, so Barry is asking, uh, obviously not all casks can become single cask releases. What quantity of casks on site would be single cask potential at any time? Well, look, you know, we've, we've, we've quite a, a large inventory of casks, as you know, but the whole um, selection process is, is, is quite, quite, quite challenging. Um, so, you know, the question is right. Not every cast would be, you know, a single cast potential. Um, but during the, I suppose, the lifetime of the cask, um, we would identify special casts. So we would do lots of tastings. Even even actually the when the distillate is put into the cask first day, we, we have what we call a distillate review team in Middleton. And we meet every probably four weeks. And we would taste all distillate going into casks, and we would identify, you know, if there was any exceptional distillates uh, there, we would identify those casks. That's kind of the very first day. And then during the life of those casks and during any other sampling, you always pick up exceptional casks. And that could be down to the cask itself. It could be down to the seasoning process. It'd be down to the distillate, but you get some exceptional casts, and they are casts that we would set aside. We would reserve. We would we would identify them, uh, and they're the casts that would be put aside. For example, for Middleton Rare, um, yeah. and and single casts, exceptional bottlings like this. That's that's how it works. Yeah, I mean, do they really stand out? These ones from the, from the crowd. They they, they would, yeah. The surges, it's it's amazing. Um, there was only maybe two weeks ago, uh, Billy, Dave, and myself were, 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 were tasting and nosing casts at Middleton. Uh, and you, you get, you know, you get exceptional casts. Um, and a lot of it will be down to that particular cask and, and maybe the seasoning process and the, the charring and the toasting. And it just hits the right notes and it all comes together. Um, so, yes, it, it, that, that happens. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm getting... Uh... Uh, pine trees almost some elements of it as well but is that it's exceptionally mm. easy to drink actually at the percentage that it is so it's 
I, I, I'd say I would, I would, yeah, fifty-four point nine. I would think that a lot of people would, if we didn't tell them the strength, they yeah. wouldn't have guessed it was fifty-four point nine. It's, it's really, really silky. Yeah, yeah. There's a question in here from Chris as well, and um, did you sit down to just all first fill bourbon cask options? A mixture of first and second fills, either. So I think this is all first fill bourbon cask, isn't it? This is this is this is this is one cask. It's a first fill cask. That's what it is. It's a first fill cask. This is yeah. one cask, and it's and a first me, fill. From the point of which the cask was selected, and the, and um, Jorgos and Rob made their choice, was there a lot of hand holding and a lot of babysitting in the meantime, or and then just say, okay, it's right now, or does it work from? When they want to release it backwards, I, I think there was the when, once the selection is made and 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 um, Yergos can come in here as well. But once the selection is made, the process kicks into action. But then there is time required to uh, get the labels done and get the design and get the bottle and all agreed. So there's a bit of a time scale there. But once it's agreed and once the, everybody's happy with that particular uh, whiskey sample, then you 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 move it as fast as you possibly can. Yeah. That be correct, Jurgis? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think the question. I think the question is more about when do you feel it's right to release the casks to the to your customers? Is is there right. a point? Okay. Do, you, do you do you taste them on a periodic basis and say, okay, this one's this one's ready now? Yeah, that that's again that happens on 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 a regular basis. Um, and any of these special casks that we've set aside, um. You know, you have to keep a close eye on them. We'd sample them maybe, it depends. We might sample them once a month or we might sample them once every six months, but we keep a very, very close eye on those because, for example, in a first fill cast, you just need to make sure that the balance between the wood and the whiskey is, is, is right. Um, so the timing is everything. And when it's right, it's right. And, and you know it's right. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's a key part of the whole cast selection process is, is the timing. Um, and again, with, you know, I, just coming to, to, to my head there, for example, you know, Middleton, Dark Whalock again, you know, timing is important with that as well, because, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a virgin old cast, uh, and you need to get the balance right between the wood, the whiskey, and just get that perfect flavor. Yeah. So hopefully that answers the, the question, Sergius. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, David O'Connell is asking, uh, how many casts did you try before settling on this one? Again, Rob and, and Kevin. As many as, as, well. the, as many as we could before the kicked us out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wouldn't do that, lads. We wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I think we went through five or six. Um, I think it was either five or six uh, samples that we that we narrowed down to, and we make a, made a decision based on those. Yeah. Has it changed much in the year and a half that you've been waiting, Jorgos? No, honestly, I when I tried again on Monday, uh, it did. Uh, you know, it gave me it gave me the same feel that that it did when when we were actually sitting down trying these a year and a half ago. Um, yeah. It just it just stood out, and you know, I brought it all back. I think it might have gone down 0.2 percent, you know, uh, in the meantime. But the tastes are all there. Um, yeah, no, it is outstanding. Is any, just saying now, if anybody I, I else, I think, sir, just. It, Sergius, if I could suggest, yeah. maybe we just add a drop, uh, add some water to this because it, it changes quite a little bit, uh, quite a bit. So, if you can just maybe add a little drop of water, uh, I'd like people to, to to nose it and taste it at the at the reduced as well. Yeah. So, if you have a little drop of water, water is one thing that that's in short supply in this office, I'm afraid. But I managed to dig up a bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a good complaint. That's a good complaint. Yeah. So, to to me, when 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 you add some water, um, the spices are still there very much, the peppers and 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 and, and those cinnamon spices, but it it tends to maybe come back a bit on, you know, maybe the vanilla and the toffee, uh, but I get I still get the toasted wood, which is really nice. Um, yeah. But I think the fruit comes more to the fore. I think there's more fruits that those exotic fruits and citrus they become more enhanced with the addition of water. Yeah. I don't know if people agree with that. Um, it, and you also it, get maybe a little hint of of uh, mint, maybe uh, mint leaf. 
Yeah, it's certainly when, when um, the water. So it, it's, it becomes quite fragrant. Yeah, I mean, it becomes super mellow and, uh, as well and uh, very no. floaty on the tongue, mm. I find. I mean, there's absolutely no burn on that. No, no, no. Lovely. It's good. Mm. Lovely. Well chosen, gentlemen, yeah. I think. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the brand has released four or five of these. Is it the plan to keep continuing uh, on, on these specialist releases over the next period of time? Yeah, it would be. I, I, we, we don't yeah. need to, you know, we don't need to do a very small number of, of Middleton casks obviously we, we also do single casks with some of the other brands but certainly you know it, it is a, it's a limited thing because just the nature of it um in terms of obviously the brand being very much about that kind of you know keeping it relatively exclusive and, and, and relatively limited and also just the nature that the special nature of the whiskey you know we couldn't i don't think if, even if we wanted to do that many there wouldn't necessarily be customers looking for this kind of release all the yeah. time and in great numbers you know it is it has to it really has to be the right fit of customer um you know and and then you know it's 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 something that i suppose takes there's a certain time involved in the process as well so you know we don't do um dozens of dozens of them but you know the, the plan would be to continue to you know when when the opportunity is there and when there's a, a right fit between ourselves and 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 the customer absolutely to, to continue to to release this kind of yeah. kind of bottling and that kind of ties in with the question that uh, John Burke, hi John, hope you're well. Um, what's the maximum number of single cast bottlings Middleton are willing to release on a yearly basis? So you know, you're not going to do 10, 20 of these in a year. These are very, very limited releases. Yeah, I mean, I think typically if you take the last, certainly the last couple of years, it'd be really two maximum a year, probably one for an, an off trade outlet and then one maybe for, you know, which some of the five star hotels that you mentioned earlier, that that kind of thing. Um, we're not going to realistically do do much more than that um, yeah. in a given year. And and see, 162 bottles came out of this cask. So obviously, uh, the Angel Share really got a good part of this. So that's uh, obviously something that you can't account for. But it does add to the rarity. But it's certainly uh, incredibly easy to drink. Mm. Too easy to drink almost. But um, Jorgos, Sergius, they said they were sampling this every month for the last 22 years. I was surprised <laughs> that there was 162 <laughs> bottles left. Yes, yeah. Well, especially there's a few of them down there as well. So they're all they're all taken. Gosh, it'd be a terrible place to work. I meant to ask you, Kevin, actually, how are you settling, how are you settling into the new role? Have you pound your feet? And uh, obviously, you're presumably much busier. Yeah, well, I've, I was busy anyway, so just, just a yeah. little bit extra. Yeah, busy. Yeah. Um, no, it's going, re it's going, it's going really well. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I suppose combining the maturation and distillation, it's 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 great. Um, I'm spending, uh, I suppose, a lot of time in the last few weeks down in in, in the in the plant. Uh, I've spent the last probably three weeks uh, working in the brew house, uh, kind of back to where <laughs> I started again. So, uh, just working on the batch brewing and meeting up with the team. Um, and everybody's so supportive and, and helpful. Um, and then on the, on the maturation side, you know, we've, we've a lot going on as well, as you know. Um, and, you know, the, the Middleton, very rare 2020 launch. Uh, that was great. Um, I meant and, to ask you about that, actually. launch as well. Yeah. yeah. I meant to ask you about the 20, The 2020 was a short run, was it, this year? Because it's, it's proving difficult to find. Yeah, I, I <laughs> heard people saying that. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a smaller batch. Um, and again, it's it's Brian's uh, fare, farewell and parting gift. Uh, and again, it, it you know it varies from year to year, and, and this year is is a smaller batch. So I think it's a case of you know if you if you get your hands on one, just uh, just just hold onto it and keep it. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, I mean, when you joined in 1998, you could have been very uh, brave to imagine you'd be sitting in the position you're in now, tasting a whiskey that was. You know, distilled back in 1998, and here you are, uh, giving us tasting notes and talking about this particular whiskey. It's 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 a funny old world. It's 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 unbelievable. I was driving home today, and you know, I was the, the thought crossed my mind that you know, 1998, and how how things have changed, and um, to end up here uh, tasting the whiskey from James J. Fox, 
um, it's 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 amazing and it's 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 an honor um, and I'm delighted to be here with with, with Rob and Jurgis and, and Ron um, to to taste it. It's look, you'd have to pinch yourself sometimes. It's little did yeah. I think back in 1998 that I'd be in this position, but. Well, it's little did we think Irish whiskey would be uh, as uh, right. strong as it is today, but uh, right. it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. Just to go, so switch over to, to Rowan there for a second. While we've still got a good connection. Yeah, uh, apologies for earlier, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, what's your role within the within the organization now, within IDL? I mean, you're brand ambassador for for Middleton and for, is it Redbreast as well? I can't. I saw it. Brand ambassador for what we call our prestige whiskey portfolio. So it would be Middleton Very Rare, Redbreast uh, would be the kind of the two main ones, and then also Method and Madness and the Spots. To a lesser degree, Jemison and Powers when needed, but we do have, as you probably you probably know them already, our, our dedicated Powers and, and Jemison ambassadors that work specifically yeah. on those brands. But it was across our whiskey portfolio as well as some of our our other kind of sort of specialty brands, things like um, Perno, Ricard, Sue, some of those kind of aperitif and cocktail focused brands, things like the Cedars and Perrier Wet Champagne, things like that. But the bulk of my my day to day, certainly pre COVID when when uh, when we could uh, be out and about a lot more was was doing was tasting for members of the public on those whiskies and then training for both bar staff and, and then off license staff as well. Um, and yeah. just I suppose you know edu- that education piece and trying to to give the people who are are meeting customers on a day to day basis, give them the the tools to to talk about our whiskies uh, to yeah. those customers. You know, so it's a uh, it's something that started uh, as a hobby for me. Yeah, I suppose now during the COVID times, uh, what's your role now, and how do you manage on that side? Well, obviously, like everybody, it's it's you know th- this online space has become has become <laughs> you know so much more central to everything we do. And, yeah, and I, I'm to be fair, it's, it's it's fantastic to be able to do things like this, whether it's you know Zoom calls or live streams or, or whatever platform to, to mm-hmm. still connect with people. And and so I have been able to to do you know quite a few tastings, whether it's for members of the public or trainings with with staff in in places, and you know, and try and continue that that side of things. Obviously, you know, not to the same degree. And you know, it's like this time of year we'd be obviously everybody gearing up for Christmas. I would have been in with with Jurgos and the guys in the shop you know kind of coming into this time last year and in the run up to christmas sampling you know yeah. talking to customers as they come in and, and handing out samples of whiskey and and unfortunately that's that's probably going to be a very difficult thing to do this year but you know trying to find other ways to connect with people and and to 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 get them to hopefully to to explore the the different whiskies and the different brands that we have yeah. uh, but it's but a I'm challenge sh- but it, you know it, it, different opportunities as well yeah but i'm sure promoting middleton isn't it, it isn't the most challenging job, I mean, it speaks for itself. So, you I mean, you have Absolutely. that strong brand. 100%. It's definitely, I mean, you know, Middleton and, and Redbreast are two brands that I think, you know, they, they have a huge amount of, of you know, awareness. People people, people really see them in, in very high regard. Yeah. And usually once you get any kind of, any any, any bit of that liquid into, into somebody's hands and they can taste it, you know, you don't really need to do a huge amount after that. It, it speaks for itself that the whiskies are... Are fantastic and look it's a real privilege for me to be able to to talk about them on, on a daily basis and to, to hopefully you know if there are people who haven't had an opportunity to try them to to, to try and be the you know the, the person that can maybe bridge that gap get them to try it and then usually that can set someone off on a journey yeah. within any one of those brands yeah middleton is, is yeah doesn't no. really need a huge amount more explanation so if we were to pretend that uh kevin isn't here uh, what, what's coming down the pipeline <laughs> I don't think I, I mean look I don't think we need to uh, it's look it's it's one of those things we work we're constantly working on as Kevin mentioned earlier innovations but you know we we we'll reveal them when when we can and when we're in a position to do so obviously you will have heard uh, and anybody who's been following blue spot is is due soon can't say any more than that but certainly watch this space uh, people will have will de- certainly have been in following that and I'm sure anybody who's on this evening will will be uh, excited about that as well and um, that's that's coming down the tracks sooner rather than later but yeah. it's the usual thing we, we're not going to give any more details away the surprise is nice as well you know it's nice to keep that element of of, of surprise yeah i mean you've, you've kept the number of releases pretty much in line what you would do annually anyway despite covid is that correct 
I think so. Yeah, Kevin, you might have. But I think I think we are more or less. I mean, obviously, some things may have shifted yeah. around in terms of dates, but we've tried to to keep things on track to, as, yeah. as much as we could. Yeah, I think what. It, yeah, whatever we've planned, we've as as Ron said, we might have changed the dates around uh, slightly, but um, yeah, we, it's it's gone according to plan. Um, obviously, the uh, the launches and uh, have been different with the virtual launches. Um, you know, you do miss the personal and meeting people and uh, all that, but we, you know, we make the best of it. Um, and uh, technology is it's 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 doing fine, um, except when Ron's uh, internet breaks down a bit, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look, it's it's, it's, go, uh, but it's different. It's it's so different. Uh, the launches. Yeah. Sergeant, do you mind if I ask Kevin a question? Please. Um, how do you deal with the 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 the, the kind of conflict or strain between innovating? And yet, at the same time, being loyal to the the products that you are inheriting. Uh, I, I, no, no problem. Uh, to be honest, Rob, um, you know we have our, 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 you know our, you know our, our, our basic products that are there for so long and that they, people love them. But um, people also are looking for something new and they're looking for innovations and they're looking to try something different. And we have to satisfy that. Um, so I, I there's, there, there really is. I, I don't see a conflict. To be honest, um, is there, are there some? Think, are there some? No. Are there some areas that you're just not allowed to go to that you have to say, okay, that stays that way, and that's just going to be it from now on, and uh, and other areas where you can where you can innovate. Yeah, I suppose to, to, to give you an example, um, you know, Method of Madness, for example, we we had quite a, a large inventory of innovative whiskies and trials that were going on for many many years and we really didn't have an outlet for for those because they didn't fit naturally into uh something like middleton for example or redbreast or jemison um uh, so we, we we needed a new outlet and that 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 was method and madness back in probably what is it 2016 2017 um and that gave us just a, a huge outlet for all these um, mad ideas that we had going back over 10, 15 years. Um, and a lot of those now have come to fruition. Um, things like chestnut and cherry and acacia and Hungarian oak. Um, and they don't fit naturally, uh, Rob, into, into certain, uh, in, into some of our brands. But Method of Madness is, is the way to go. So I was delighted when that when that came on stream back, back, back what, three, four years ago. Um, yeah. uh, but you're right in saying then you have, you know, you've, you've, you've your Redbreast 12, you've your Jemison and, you know, they have their style, they have their DNA, um, and you don't go shooting straight in and, and coming up with some, some mad idea, uh, for, for, for Redbreast. They have their DNA, they have their personality, they have their style, um, and, 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 and we follow that. Um, yeah. so the, the mad innovative stuff, that's for, for Method of Madness. Yeah. If that, if it, is that answer the, the question, Rob, yeah. Yeah. Just in terms of the pot still in this, uh, is it all medium pot still? Yeah, it was. It was a medium pot still inside. It's again, it's a single cast. People have to understand that this was one cask, uh, and the, the the distillate is is a medium style uh, pot still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yours? I mean, I'm sure you're you're, you're thrilled with the, with this particular release, and it's met what you're what you set out to do. Is this a direction that you're going to continue exploring going forward? And, and what does it mean for the store? Absolutely. We do We do collaborate. Um, as I said to you earlier, it, we, this is what we always did and this is what we want to do with Aris Whiskey. We want to collaborate closely with distilleries and, you know, get involved into this process and, uh, you know, strengthen the relationships that we have uh, with our suppliers and, um, it is very very important um and we have we have things in the pipeline as well uh for for for, for in the future uh near future and far future and uh, it's great it, it, it is something that's very exciting we love whiskey um and we do really want to get our hand on in the process as well and release uh bottlings you know with our name exclusive bottlings with our name on it yeah yeah, I suppose you you've taken over the role now as managing director in Foxes. There was it a year and a half, two years now, or more? Actually, going three years now. Right. Okay. And what yeah. changes have you seen? And and out of the changes that you you've brought about, have you uh, are you happy with those that have you put in place? 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, first of all, the whiskey the whiskey sector is growing. It's it's getting stronger and stronger. I mean, we see it, and in our, in our customers that are coming through our shop, you know, they do want to try something different. They want to be educated about whiskey. They want to find to get something here from us that they can only get in Ireland. That they kind of find something at home. They come to us for uh, for our recommendations. You know, they want to explore. Um, I always remember a long time ago um, when I first joined the shop, and people used to come in the shop and say, "Do you have Irish Scotch?" Uh, but <laughs> this doesn't happen anymore. You know, like the the, the Irish whiskey is strong in the market, and people know about it, and uh, and they want to explore. Um, and it's why they come to us, you know, they come to us for exclusive bottlings, for recommendations. Um, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great, it's a great industry to be involved in and we thoroughly, we thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. And, and now obviously that the store is uh, in lockdown and in lockdown yeah. until the beginning of December. Uh, w what's, uh, what's your strategy now? Obviously you have an online presence as well. Uh, overall, is business up, down? Uh, how, how significant and how much of investment do you have to make now in the online presence? Well, we have to, you know, we could not plan for any of these that happened this year. And we have to be quick on our feet and we have to, uh, you know, to find ways to uh, provide the service that customers are used to get into the shops in a, in a different way. Um, online has become a, a huge part of our business now uh, because for a big, big part of the year, we've had to be uh, closed um, or have very, very small footfall. Um, and, you know, we do, we do, you know, doing, putting more presence online and uh, doing things like what we do today, you know, we can we can stay in touch with our customers. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's not easy for any business and we just have to, we have to find a way to make the most out of it. Yeah, I mean, you, you've had challenging times. You, you personally, you had the Lewis line going outside, so the front, uh, the front of the store was a bit like a yeah. building site sometimes. And then right. COVID, of course, has, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people haven't had the chance to come into the store and just see how luxurious and how great a fit out it's been. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, we couldn't have picked the timing better. You know, we opened our doors on the 10th of March. We were hoping that we'll have a big launch and invite all our friends and customers to come in and see us and try a few whiskeys and you know have tastings every day but uh you know the plans we, we had to change our plans and then a lot of people you know ha haven't been haven't been in to see us and you know we're here and you know we would be delighted to see everybody and welcome everybody Um things are a little bit different than you know what it had been and um, we can only have a certain amount of people at the same time in the shop we cannot do tastings at the moment uh, which is it's a big big attraction you know and it's something that we do enjoy doing uh, and it gets gets people in and gets whiskey on their on their hands and um, we haven't been able to do it and we hope that we will be able to do that soon again yeah okay well that's great everybody heard there that yours is inviting everybody into the store for free drinks <laughs> uh, as soon as the lockdown is over <laughs> rob get the table ready and uh, something to look forward to and um, of course cigars is a big part of the business it's yeah. 50 percent of the um if you were to pick a cigar to go with this whiskey, what would it be? What would it be? Um, we get we get people are asking us all the time, what's the best cigar to pair with this whiskey, or what's the best whiskey to pair with this cigar? And what we always say is that there's no there's no right or wrong here. What you want to do is you want to see how one interacts with the other, and to do that, what we what we normally suggest is kind of match the the strength of the whiskey with the strength of the cigar. You don't want you want you don't want a very strong cigar with a mild or a medium uh, whiskey because you don't want one overpowering the other. You want the two of them complementing each other. Um, yeah. And there is, you know, the, this this uh, the way the flavors work together. You know, you would get a lot of different uh, flavors if you try if you pair it with different cigars. Um, I would suggest, you know, I would recommend the. A medium, medium bodied cigar, medium maybe to full bodied cigar, rather than going to some that's too strong. Um, brands wise, Monte Cristo or Apartagas would actually go very well because they have this kind of woody, medium, medium to full body, woody, spicy profile. And I don't know about Euro, but I think either uh, either Monte Cristo, Mundo, or Apartagas D4 would be my my go to. Yeah, I it's amazing. For the purist, I would say actually that the whiskey needs. To be given the respect it deserves and 
a cigar, no matter what cigar it is, is going to influence your, your taste. Um, so I would suggest first up that this whiskey should be should be tried before you light your cigar, because it will it, it will interact, and a, a purist needs to be able to taste it fully. Yeah. But I, I suppose as as it goes on, yeah, something that would stand up to it uh, would be I'd probably go for the Partagas brand as opposed to the Monte Cristo one. But yeah. that's just a preference, and I might go for a P2 as opposed to a D4. But it's everybody's everybody's in, individual choice. See, this is the great thing about uh, whiskey and cigars is that people pick out different notes, but there seems to be the same level of complexity. In, and I'm not speaking as an expert, but from what I'm picking up from you guys, there seems to be the same level of complexity in cigars as there almost as there is in whiskey. Would that be uh, well, the interesting comment? thing, uh, yeah. So, so a whiskey will age in its barrel, whereas a cigar will age in its box. So, there is the same um, aging process effects. Uh, cigars taste as as, as it does uh, a whiskey. Obviously, there are different processes, but the the age factor is a big factor in the handmade cigar market. Yeah. Um, so there is a it is very much an exploration of of, of taste. You yeah. know whether you're trying uh, like you can do a vertical tasting in the cigar market just as well as you can do a vertical tasting in the premium spirits market. Yeah. And it's it's and, and then across the brands you have your subtle differences or your big differences and you cross your sizes similarly um, there's, there's so there is a world of complexity and and, and a super um, a super kind of playground for exploring the different uh, combinations of tastes that can be achieved. Yeah, uh, Kevin, uh, that that leads me to a very stupid question, but I'll ask it anyway because I, my dad used to smoke cigars and I always used to love sniffing the box, the cedar wood box. And uh, there's no possibility of maturing in cedar wood, is there? Cedar wood? Oh, yeah. there's there's a question now, it searches. Yeah. Um, there, there, it's it's possible. Yeah. Um, there is there is some work around. There is some 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 work done on cedar wood. Um, okay. but you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to wait a bit of time yet, Sergius. We'd have to we we'll see how that goes. See how that goes. But yeah, yeah. it's 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 possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. It, the, the main factor here would be just ensuring that they they hold the spirit and they're they're spirit tight. Uh, so trying to get a good Cooper cedar cask is a challenge. Yeah, so you're not going to be pouring wh whiskey into cedar boxes of cigars not any time soon. <laughs> well, not not, not <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, I had a question there from right. uh, and, and, yeah. A question there from Anna. I know Anna is working down in Middleton. She's asking Joros, do you have any? Uh, we could almost ask this question in Greek, actually, because Anna <laughs> is from Greece as well. And uh, she's asking, have you any non-whiskey or other whiskey-related projects in the pipeline? Or is gin um, possible in the future? We're, it's not, whiskey is not, it's not the only thing that we experiment with. Uh, as I said, with all our products, you know, we do, we do, we do the same thing. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a, uh, it could be something that we can look into. Yeah. I have to say, I've I've tried. I've been lucky enough to try quite a few of the um, single cask releases of the Middleton, and they all are very different from each other. And I don't want to compare and say one is better than the other, but I mean the common the common thread of the oak cask and the bourbon finish and the vanilla and the you know the spice it runs through the whole lot of them. Middleton uh, will never be finished in another cask other than a bourbon cask, or is there a possibility? Or has it been finished in any other cast ever? No. So the, the Middleton, I suppose, very rare uh, DNA or, you know, personality is, is based on American barrels. Yeah. Um, always was. So if you take if you take a Middleton, very rare, for example, that's all um, American barrels, uh, first fill uh, and, and some refills, depending on the, the vintage and what profile we're looking for. So yeah. that's middle very rare. But then if you look at something like the Middleton Dark Wailock, uh, again, what, what you start off with is the American barrel. And we mm -hmm. take that liquid and then we finish it in Irish oak for be it a year, two years or whatever is required. So I suppose that's where a different barrel comes into the equation for, for Middleton. Uh, and then if you look at Bar Barry Crockett Legacy, again, it's all based around the, the, the American oak. Uh, but we also have a, a small amount of virgin American oak as well. Um, mm -hmm. 
so yeah, you're right in saying it's very much in the DNA of, of middle to very rare, the, the, the American oak, uh, the Quercus alba, um, and the, the season bourbon and, 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 and on all that. So um, you never say never, but I don't see it losing that central DNA, th those characteristics of the vanilla, um, the toffee, the toasted wood, and, and a lot of those flavors are, are, are coming out tonight and people can see it in this, this, this beautiful whiskey. Yeah. Actually, the longer I leave it in the glass, uh, well, it just opens up more all, all the time. And it, it does. Very, yeah. hard, very hard to put down. Rowan, maybe you see this more more often, but what what is the love up there with uh, Middleton Very Rare? I mean, you know, I, anybody giving a gift to somebody or, you know, uh, very often anyway, it's a Middleton Very Rare if you're going at the prestige level. What's the, yeah. the, the root of the love affair with Middleton? Amongst collectors also, of course. Absolutely. I suppose, I mean, when it was, when the brand was launched back in 1984, it was really the first luxury Irish whiskey. There wasn't, yeah. you know, at that time we talked about how few distilleries were around. There were, you know, even brands that were around, obviously Jemison and Redbreast were, were, were there at that stage, things like that, but they wouldn't have had the same range, you know, going from say in Redbreast case 12 up to now a 27 year old and, and a core range that was that extensive. It would have been, you know, a lot fewer products around on the market from a lot yeah. fewer distilleries. So I suppose it, it, it maybe it, it captured something there in, in terms of that kind of pioneering, that, that space, that luxury kind of category, that, that a whiskey that people, you know, would see very much as this is a real treat. This is whether it's for myself or as a gift, you know, this is something that, you know, it's for special occasions. And then I suppose the fact that it has that, you know, it's a, it's a vintage yeah. bottling. So there's a limited quantity. There's a new one each year. So it has instantly, it has a collectability, I suppose, from that point of view, people who are inclined to, to try and, you know, keep them, you know, keep that collection up to date, yeah. naturally, I suppose, will, will gravitate towards it. But I think, like you say, it's very much one that, I think even people who maybe don't necessarily feel like they know a lot about whiskey will be aware of Middleton Very Rare as something that, you know, if they want to give somebody something that's quite special, it, it yeah. has this, it's established that, I suppose, since, since, since 1984, you know, over the years, it, it has built up that that aura and that prestige um, as as very much a, a really special brand. And then obviously the whiskey is within that then. And, you know, and you, when you move up to the likes of Barry Crockett Legacy or, or up to the Dark Ilex then as well, there's there's a sense of, of you know, this is something really special. Yeah. Um, and I think people, obviously, I think then th th things like the packaging really helps, you know, even, um, you know, th there was obviously the packaging that was around for such a long time. And since it's got the, the upgrade and the, the the repack that I think you know that again just it has this really luxurious feel this really premium feel and um it's a lovely thing to have on your shelf hopefully open and and with the cork popped and that, that people are, are tasting it but you know as a piece an art piece almost as well it is something that I think people are are conscious of absolutely I mean I, I was watching the auction sites there and I saw the 1989 go for a snip at 11,000 but um, yeah, but that's the desirability and the collectability. Of time, yeah, but uh, yeah, no. Look, um, I suppose I'll, I'll I'll come to an end now and really when, and and have a chat with uh, Yoris and and Rob and, and just get your feedback on on what it means to your to your business and uh, what will you see the future for Irish whiskey for yourselves and um, future limited edition releases. Um, do you want to start, Rob? Well, I think I think it's it's clear to us that that our our place in the market is where a um, is actually probably where Rowan struggles to do his job, and that is when it needs to be hand sold, or that we we need to have a, a an ability to add value to consumers. So we've 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 established something, or we've found something interesting, and we've been able to collect an inventory of it, or we've. We've been able to collaborate with a supplier to produce something different or they have a product which needs to be explained and that's the position that we kind of hold in the market so in the and whether that's the the, the whiskey market or in the in the um, handmade cigar market that's where we are it's it's we can't compete with um, a lot of the other supply channels where you put it on the shelf and it sells and um, we our, our our challenge is to is to add value and that's by bringing something different so yeah. it will be around exploring either exclusive 
bottlings or or identifying something that we particularly like. Um, mm -hmm. And that happens all the time. And if Jorga sees something, he tastes it, he likes it, it's at the right price. It's well, okay, well, we'll invest in that. And we yeah. and we do. So if, if it has a date stamp, it's easier because you know then it it will be slightly different next year. So by investing in it this year, it will be able to um to to really add value. Yeah. So that's where we kind of feel that we 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 need to bring our customers something that's slightly different in order for us to be adding value to them. Um yeah. so that's 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 our position. I mean the growth seems to be I mean, the growth in whiskey is everywhere, but the super premium and the premium is really where the big growth is. I think it, it it's twenty three percent or something on the super premium side. Uh, is that what you're seeing in store? And does that obviously that aligns very well with handmade cigars? Yeah, I'll pass that one over to you, August. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We have seen an increase uh, on the past few years. Um, uh, like I said earlier, people are looking for exclusive stuff. They're looking for more premium whiskies. Um, of course, there's a lot of uh, collectability aspect. A lot of people collect whiskey now uh, more than we found it a lot more than uh, they did years ago. Uh, but it's not just that. People do enjoy uh, premium whiskey. Um, we've had people say, no, I have to get two of these. You know, I want to keep one, but I do want to open one of them uh, yeah. as well. So... It is. We've been. We have seen a very, very good, a big increase in that. Yeah. Just to just to remind and inform our viewers there, the pricing on this at the moment. You have a specialty priced at seven ninety five until yes. Yes. Sunday. Until Sunday night. Yes. Yes. So okay. It's a, so a lot week special. Yeah, and then the normal price is what nine ninety five. Nine hundred ninety five. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a great offer now and coming up to Christmas, if somebody's looking for a very special gift, you know, that'll be, um, look, I mean, the collectability and uh, the desirability of the Middleton range is synonymous, you know, with Irish distillers and the high end brands. But, uh, you know, when you start talking about a single cask version of a Middleton, very rare, you know, that desirability goes through the roof. So yeah. I'm sure they're, they're going to apply. I'm hoping you'll keep a few bottles there for, People that come in and try sometimes now and again, but uh, or when you open your store again, that's, that's the <laughs> one, so. look. Look, I won't keep you all any any longer. I just want to thank you all very much. It's the first time we've had a uh, five in the meeting, um, but it's been uh, really enjoyable speaking to you and, and hearing firsthand the process of taking an idea and, and delivering such a superb product. And you wouldn't expect anything less from Middleton either, but and you wouldn't expect you know, uh, boxes to be happy with anything that's not great quality. So I think it's it's a great marriage. And, you know, and the parallels, again, between cigars and whiskey and, and the foray into that whiskey market is really fascinating. So um, I better not find out too much about cigars, otherwise that would be trouble. But, um, <laughs> look, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And uh, stay safe and stay well. And thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Launch okay, Bye -bye. launch it. See ya. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining us. Uh, that was a really insightful view of what it goes to, to make a, a single cask whiskey. Uh, you're all very good for, for supporting us. And uh, look, uh, we'll be making this available tomorrow morning for viewing on, uh, on YouTube and then it'll be as a podcast for download so thank you all very much for joining i hope you had a great evening look after yourself stay safe um we've got another interesting show next week actually the next few shows we have lined up are very exciting so do join in if you've enjoyed the show please subscribe to our channel and help support us and uh take care thank you very much